Income tax 2023-2024. Business expenses, rent expense. Get ready and some coffee so we can avoid the government forcing us to move into a shack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and More, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements have an income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The Schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting, though, that the Schedule C itself, basically a funny income statement, having business income minus business expenses resulting, which you could call, by the way, business deductions, resulting in, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls into line one income here of the formula, this income tax formula outlining the calculation on the form 1040, of which we see the first page here, Schedule C, ultimately rolling into line number eight, additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1, additional income and adjustments to income part number one, additional income, the Schedule C rolling into line three, business income or loss. This is the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, having a P&L, profit and loss or income statement format, income minus expenses. We're looking at the expenses here, which you could call once again, business deductions and specifically the rent expense. So what is rent? As we know, rent is any amount you pay for the use of property you do not own. So usually when we think of rent, we might be thinking rent on like an apartment, rent of a home, rent of a car, rent of office building, and so on and so forth. Couple things with rent that could make them a little bit more complex. One is, when is rent deductible? When you've rented something, in order to use that thing for business use. It has to be an ordinary and necessary business expense. So if you were renting equipment, using the equipment entirely for the business, you would expect that the rent would be deductible. If you're renting an office space, using the entire office space for the business, you would think that would be deductible. One complication with rent is renting like part of, part of the home, for example. If I rent my home, Instead of owning the home, I'm renting the home, but I have a home office. Well, now you would think that part of the home is basically similar to renting an office, and therefore part of that rent might be deductible as a home office expense, which we'll talk more about later. The complication there coming from the fact that it's difficult to break out the business component versus the personal component. We could have a similar thing with the automobile. Instead of purchasing the automobile, we might be renting the automobile or leasing the automobile. And then the questions with the automobile are more complex in that we could be thinking, are we gonna do the mileage method or do we take uh, the actual cost uh, method into consideration when we're doing the calculation of the automobile expenses? One other complication with renting or leasing is that we have this substance over form problem. So in other words, sometimes when we purchase equipment, for example, it might be structured as a rent or leasing type of agreement, but in actuality, it looks like a purchasing type of agreement, in which case the tax code is usually gonna say, hey, if it's a purchase, you have to record it kind of like you purchased it, even though you structured it like a renting type of agreement. So certain industries might have that come into 
come into play when they buy equipment. And any industry that if you're leasing a car, that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind. Do I have to put the, is this like a lease that needs to be capitalized, for example? All right, so in general, you can deduct rent as a business expense only if the rent is for the property you use in your business. So if you have or will receive equity in or title to the property, you cannot deduct the rent. Why? Because if you're getting title to the property, you, it doesn't look like it's a rental agreement. It looks like it's a purchase agreement. Notice that those two things can look fairly similar in nature, meaning if I was to purchase, say, a car, for example, then I could say, let me take out a loan and pay you the loan back in an installment loan of standard monthly payments, for example. If I rent or lease the car, then I could it could look quite similar because now instead of taking out a loan, I'm just going to be paying for the use of the car with standard monthly payments. So it looks similar in that you have these standard monthly payments that are happening. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that if you buy the car, you own the car, you can do whatever you want to the car, and you basically have the title to the, to the car, right? Whereas the other, in the other situation, you're going to return the car at the end of the lease and it's not actually your property, you're basically renting or leasing the property. But if you lease the property for like 10 years, and that's the useful life of the car, then it kind of looks like you basically purchased the car, right? Because you're kind of locked into the lease. So in that case, you might call it a capital lease. Or if the title converts to you, almost guaranteed at the end of your payments of the car, even though you structured it as a lease, it looks like a purchase type of agreement. Uh, and, and therefore the tax code might force you to kind of structure it as though it was a purchase type of agreement. So you have to keep those in mind. So uh, unreasonable rent. So you cannot take a rental deduction for unreasonable rents. Ordinarily, the issue of unreasonable arises only if you and the leaser are related. So normally, of course, if you have a normal business arm's length situation, you have at least two or more parties, but let's imagine we have two parties and they're both looking out for their best interest and therefore they're gonna negotiate on the free market in terms of the rental prices. But if you have family situations involved, for example, and let's say that a family member owns an office complex and you need an office space and they rent you the office space, right? Well, now we have a complexity because possibly they're going to do the rent or make the rent for less than the market value of the rent uh, or something like that, which could be, you know, manipulating things with regards to, to taxes that can mess things up for taxes. So rent paid to a related person is reasonable if it is the same amount you would pay to a stranger for use of the same property. So you have to figure out what the fair market value is, which again can be difficult because usually if you're renting something, something large like a car or an apartment or an office building or a home, then you don't really know exactly what the fair market value is unless you sold it because those things are unique in nature. And, and you could try to estimate it. You could try to do an appraisal on it and do your best job. But in theory, the idea is that we should be renting it for basically uh, the, market, the market price. So rent is not unreasonable just because it is figured as a percentage of gross receipts. All right, related persons include members of your immediate family, including siblings, uh, either whole or half, your spouse, ancestors, and lineal descendants. For a list of other related persons, see section 267 of the Internal Revenue Code. Rent on your home. So obviously, if you live in the place, it's partially personal and uh, you paying rent on it, which means you don't own it, you're not dealing with mortgage interest and whatnot, you're renting the home, whether it be an apartment or a house, right? You're renting instead of purchasing it, and part of the home is being used for business, right? So if you rent your home and use part of it as your place of business, you may be able to deduct the rent you pay for that part. Now that is huge for people that rent, because note that if you purchase the home, you probably have a loan out against it and you might be able to deduct like the mortgage interest on the home, even if you have a W-2 job and you're not doing Schedule C 
uh, sole proprietor business. If you have a sole proprietor business and you own the home, you might be able to deduct a part of the interest as well as we discussed in prior presentations. But if you can't deduct it on the Schedule C, you might be able to deduct it on the Schedule A. And you might be able to possibly depreciate part of the property if you own uh, if you owned the home, if you had to schedule C, you can't de depreciate on the schedule A. But my point is that when people own the home, you could get some benefit for taxes, even if you are a W-2 employee through the interest, although it's not as large of a deduction as sometimes people think at first. Whereas if you rent the home, you don't get any schedule A special uh, deduction. Uh, so, so, it could be quite nice then if you have a home office to be able to deduct part of the rent, which could be, of course, a huge uh, cost uh, as part of the business expense. Okay, so you must meet the requirements for the business use of your home. So obviously, we'll talk, you have to meet the requirements to make it a business use scenario, which can be kind of complex. And so we'll talk about the business use of the home and particular in future presentations. So for more information though, you can see business use of the home later. So rent paid in advance. So generally rent paid uh, in your business is deducted in the year paid or accrued. So if you pay rent in advance, you can deduct only amount that applies to your use of the rented property during uh, the tax year. So here we have this issue with the cash basis method and the accrual basis method again. Remember that if you're, my coffee's ready. <laughs> if you're a sole proprietor business, that you, you can often choose, as we talked about in a prior course or section, if you're gonna be on a cash basis or an accrual basis with some limitations. For example, if you have inventory, that's gonna usually tilt you to doing some accrual type of things uh, and so on. But whichever one you are on cash or accrual the tax code might force you to do some things that deviate from that in certain situations particularly when you're on a cash based method because the the tax code is going to be 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 skeptical the irs is skeptical that you will abuse a cash based method by manipulating expenses and income by simply manipulating when you pay the cash so for example if I pay rent on a monthly basis, then let's say that this tax year, let's say tax year 2023, I had a lot of money. I had a lot of income in that year. And the next tax year, I don't expect to have as much income. That means that in this tax year, I might be in a higher tax bracket because, because now my income is going to be pushing me up on those progressive tax brackets. So I would like to lower my income this year. If, if at all possible, if it was legally possible to do that. Well, how can I do that? Well, before the end of 2023, why don't I start prepaying expenses? Now, we talked about prepaid expenses primarily with insurance, which you generally prepay by its very nature. You usually pay for like a year in advance of insurance, for example. But you can apply that concept to any expense. One of the big ones, of course, being rent. So if you're trying to lower the current year income, I can go to my, my landlord and say, hey, look, I'll pay you the next two years in advance. I'll pay you a whole year's in advance today or two years in advance today to lower my income today. And as long as I paid it on a cash-based system, it should lower my net income this year, lowering my taxes. Obviously, the tax code sees that as manipulative. So they're going to say you can't do that, which means even though that's what would happen on a cash based method, we're going to force you to be on somewhat of an accrual based method in that case to avoid that kind of manipulation. All right. So then notice on, on the other side of things, if you were receiving uh, the money, then then it's kind of the opposite, because if, if I was the landlord and I received like two months, uh, like a year's two years worth of rent that was in advance, then if I was on an accrual method, I wouldn't actually record the income until they used the property, right? Even though I got the money uh, in an advance payment. But again, the tax code is likely to say, hey, look, you've got the money now, you can pay us now, and we would like you to record it as income when you received it. Okay, so in any case, you can deduct the rest of your payment only over the period to which it applies. In other words, this is just a timing difference. So it's not like you're going to 
completely lose the deduction, they're going to make you to do the accrual thing in that case, which is deduct the amount that was applied to the current year for the use of the property, even though you paid for more than that, and then deduct, deduct in the future years according to when you consumed it. But you have to, watch, you have to be careful in that case, of course, because then you, you want to make sure that you get the deduction in future years just from a bookkeeping standpoint so that you properly record it.